Well, hello. Thank you for tuning in. For those of you who are new to me, my name is Rick, and through the 100th Hill, I bring to you the best, most transformative information from everywhere that helps us be the best version of ourselves that we can be. Today, I'm going to answer two very important questions. The first one, did the chicken come before the egg? And two, what is the secret ingredient to being successful in life? Listen, big guy, now that you're my protege, it's time I cut you in on the secret to success. Any guesses? Uh, work really, really hard? No. Oh, thank God. No, that's right. It's not work really, really hard. Although that wouldn't hurt. No, tell me if this sounds familiar to you. I'm going to work my ass off. I'm going to get the job that I want. I'm going to get the salary that I want. And then, and only then, will I be happy. Now, if that does sound like a mantra that you subscribe to, then you're kind of normal because that is kind of how society has fashioned us to be over the years. And according to Sean Ecole, we've got it backwards. By that, he means that we've got to work on happiness first. And if we can be happy in life, that leads to more and more success. Now, for me, that actually makes a lot of sense, but there's a lot of studies that support this as well. Now, studies are showing that happy workers are more satisfied with their job, they get better social support, and they get better performance reviews from their bosses. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, that is why they're happy. That would be fair, but longitudinal studies disagree. Students who are happy have been reported to being later in life being in better, more prestigious jobs by the age of 26. They make more money than their gloomier peers, and they're also more likely to get job offers after they graduate from university. So now you can see the chicken does come before the egg. Well, uh, maybe the egg comes first. So does this mean that all the grumps out there have no chance in landing themselves in a sweet gig? No, it doesn't. This is not a hard and fast rule. So that's good news for you nihilists and emos out there. You too can still make stacks on stacks on stacks on stacks but it will be harder. Now, if you're convinced that giving this happiness thing is worth a crack, then follow along because I'm gonna give you five things that you can do right now in life that will have a decided impact on your baseline happiness levels. And by that, I mean, you know, there's always gonna be bad things that happen in life. It's a roller coaster, right? Good things and bad things happen all the time and our happiness levels will go up and down. However, the baseline happiness level, if we can shift that up, what that means is the bad things are a little bit higher than they were before, and the good things are even better than they were before, and that's what this is about. Now, for those of you who aren't convinced and think that giving happiness is not exactly worth a shot, and I know that sounds ridiculous to a lot of you, because, I mean, who wouldn't want to give happiness a shot? But it is a thing. There's a lot of us that just don't see happiness as an option right now. They might be thinking things like, well, I've got other things to figure out in life. I need to get this done. I have this objective. And so they might be working 70 hours a week, stressed, unhealthy, unhappy. And for you guys, I really implore you to reconsider that option because it doesn't have to be that way. At least give a, give a go to reading Sean Acor's book, The Happiness Advantage, because it is amazing. It's transformative. I'll put a link in the description below. And if that doesn't convince you, then you know what? You do you, man. But for everybody else, these are five things that you can do right now that will make you a shit ton happier in life. Number one is appreciate stuff. Every day, every single day, no exceptions. List out three things that you appreciate in life. They don't have to be big. They don't have to be grand or anything like that. It can be as simple as just a TV show that you like, but it just has to be something specific and something that you genuinely are happy is in your life right now. Sometimes this will be easy and it'll take you just a few seconds to fill out this list. And some days it'll be a little bit harder and it might take you a couple of minutes, but you have to persist and you have to do it every single day. And the reason for this is it retrains our brains to be like this positivity finder. A bit like going to the gym. The more that you go to the gym, the more that you lift, the more that you run, the better your body gets at lifting and running. And it's the same with our brains in that the more that we do this exercise, the better our brains get at finding the good things in life. 
And so when we do this for long enough, our brains become better at this and we notice more of the positive things that happen in the world and we're less impacted by the bad things that happen because these things we cannot control, but we can control the way we receive them and that's what this is about. Number two, speaking of exercise, I'm not going to break new ground here by telling you that exercise is good for you, but along with the obvious physical benefits that we get from exercising, there's a lot of mental benefits that we get from it as well. Firstly, exercising releases endorphins, and endorphins are great. There are neurotransmitters that make us very, very happy. But on top of that, Exercising can also be great for our self-esteem and our confidence. It can also keep us healthier, like out of bed, sick all the time. It also opens up doors for us. I mean, think about the people who can't go hiking or swimming or rock climbing or skydiving just because they're not in the right shape to do it. Why have any doors in life closed when you can open them up just by going to the gym a little bit more? Number three, be kind to others. Donate, volunteer. Help a friend move, lend an ear to somebody who needs it. Conscious acts of kindness send out smiles to the world and when they come back to us, it's impossible not to reciprocate that smile. It will build connections to other people, which is a basic human need. And on top of that, we might even get some of that kindness in return. But what's important to note here is this is not about a return. There should be no expectations when you commit these acts of kindness to get something back from that because expectation is what breeds discontent and this is about being happy right so when you commit these acts it's about them and not about you another thing that you can do is incorporate yourself into the task as much as you can so for example uh, when you're giving change to a homeless person, have a chat with them for 45 seconds. Or uh, when it's a cause that your friend is promoting on Facebook, as well as donating to it, maybe you could share it and try and get the word out even further beyond what they've done. Incorporating yourself into the task as much as you can sort of amplifies those warm and fuzzy feelings that we get from doing these wonderful deeds. The fourth thing that you can do is meditate. Now, even I'll admit, this can be a bit of a challenge. But studies have shown that even just five minutes of meditation a day can have a massive impact on our sense of calm and contentment in life. And I think if nothing else, it's just a great way to switch off from this crazy overstimulation that the world gives us every single day. And then finally, spend money on experiences and not stuff. Now, I get it. When you get a new iPhone or something, it's like super exciting for a week. I mean, even the biggest technophiles of us out there surely know that when they're 70 years old, you're not going to be talking to your grandkids about that time you got the new iPhone X. Like, it's just not that big of a deal in the scheme of life. But even the worst holidays that we have where shit just went wrong, we were stressed, we were, it caused us a lot of pain at the time, unless it was a complete tragedy, Usually with these sorts of experiences, we can still laugh about them later on in life and they actually start to bring us joy. And the return that we get on these experiences just compounds over the years and it's so much more valuable to us, our happiness, than buying stuff is. So open up your wallet to surfing lessons or skiing lessons, throw a party for somebody, have drinks with your favorite people, get a massage. It doesn't really matter as long as it's something that you enjoy doing, an experience that you enjoy. It's usually more memorable if you can do it with other people, but sometimes we need our me time as well. Now I've got to say, just even putting this content together really made me happy. Like it just makes me smile thinking about the things that we can do to be happy. Like for example, I got a text while I was writing this stuff uh, from a friend who was a little bit annoyed and concerned about all these you know, lockdowns and bullshits going on around the world. And it really, really sucks, but I couldn't help but respond with a cringingly positive response, which she didn't really appreciate. But the point is that even just consciously thinking about the path towards happiness makes us a little bit happier. So maybe start with two or three things as a beginning, because maybe all five is a little bit jarring for you, or go for all five if you want, but you've got to start. Now, you won't see the results immediately. A bit like going to the gym again. You know, you don't go to the gym once and then have a six pack. But 
After about three or four weeks of consistently going to the gym, you will start to notice some results. Your body will change. And it's a bit like that with this. Unfortunately, we don't have mirror selfies and scales to, to measure those results. But there is something that you can do there. And, and one thing that I notice about myself is seeing how you deal with the negatives in life and how you've changed um, as a result of this practice, this daily practice that you put in. So to illustrate the point, I'll just share an example. Recently, I had a pretty bad week where I learned that my grandfather had a terminal illness and then also a family member who I'm very, very close to had some really serious relationship issues and that really fucking sucked. Like there was nothing I could do about it. I was completely helpless. And to anybody that would be a bit depressing, but I didn't lose sleep over it and I did wake up every day fairly happy. And Maybe that makes me sound cold, but the thing is, there's no excuse to not be happy in life. Whether you're going after something that's really important to you or something genuinely bad happens in life, there's still no excuses to not get on with it and be happy again. Now, I'm not saying just put your head in the sand and ignore the bad things that happen to you. You do have to deal with them, but once you've dealt with them, you refocus, you focus on being happy, you get back to having an awesome life. That's all we can do because if bad things happening to us meant that we can't be happy, then no one is ever going to be happy in life. Now, if you want to learn more about this whole thing, I really do recommend reading Sean Acor's book, The Happiness Advantage. Like I said, it's a game changer. Link in the description below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe because there's going to be a lot more stuff that I'm sure you'll get a lot out of too. And also, give us a thumbs up. Consider it your good deed for the day. Don't forget, there's no excuse to not be happy. But for now, thank you for watching and it's Huru from Rick.